Hi, I'm Trudy Oxley. Weaning is a well-established and important management practice in Northern Australia. Knowing why, when and how to wean is an essential skill for any stockman. We all dream about becoming a better stockman, to know and understand how cattle think, to the degree that with just one tiny cue, we can get that animal moving at the speed we want it, in the direction we ask it, and at the time we ask for it. This is all about educating livestock. Cattle can feel a fly land on their back. That's how sensitive they are. It's up to us to learn how to use our energy to positively influence cattle in a way that's natural to them and that benefits both animal and human in the long run. Weaning involves separating the calf from its mother so that the cow is relieved of the need to produce milk and therefore is better able to maintain body condition. In Northern Australia this is particularly important as production is generally based on native grasses with an extended dry season. Leaving a calf on its mother in this environment puts pressure on the cow where her nutritional resources are going into producing milk for the calf instead of maintaining her all-important body condition. Relieving the cow from the need to produce milk equates to feeding that cow two kilograms of grain per day. Cow body condition is the most important factor we are able to manage to maximise the chances of a cow reconceiving within three to four months from calving down. If calves aren't weaned at an appropriate weight, particularly over the dry season, cows will lose body condition and may end up only producing a calf every second year. Weaning is also the perfect opportunity for you to train your weaners so that they learn not to fear unfamiliar, new or unusual situations. A lot of the people watching this will be experienced horse people and perhaps have broken in a number of young horses and would well understand the difference between how well an unbroken colt would respond to a new and potentially frightening situation versus how well a police horse might respond to a pressure situation. The difference between the two is training and gradual exposure to novel situations where they learn to respond in an unstressed way. The time and effort you put into training your weaners will affect the productivity and welfare of that animal throughout its lifetime as it moves through the supply chain. Key factors in managing stress at weaning time include segregating weaners on size when feeding concentrate, regular and calm handling, monitoring for general health every day, treating parasites and vaccinating for relevant diseases, and of course, it's extremely important to provide the right nutrition. Weaners in the yard need to be fed good quality hay and supplements immediately after weaning to maintain effective rumen function. A delay of more than 24 hours could result in reduced or changed rumen bug activity and it could take up to three weeks for normal rumen function to return. How weaners are fed will also affect how they will grow over the coming months and can impact on their long-term growth, health, meat quality and reproductive performance. Segregating weaners into classes based on size and or condition can help with targeted nutrition. It helps to avoid bullying and competition for feed and water. Some classes of weaners will be fine with hay and supplement, while smaller animals will need to be supplemented with protein also. Segregation allows for this targeted, more cost-effective feeding. In the yards, and once weaned, all weaners should be checked regularly to ensure they remain in good condition and assess their feed and water situation. Up until weaning time, calves have had relatively little handling or contact with humans. So correct handling and positive conditioning will set your weaner up for life. And really, that's what this DVD is all about. Before weaning, calves have had the protection of maternal antibodies from colostrum. The stress of weaning, close confinement and the drastic change in diet means weaners are more susceptible to disease. Ensuring the right nutrition is available at weaning time is essential. The main feed for weaners is usually hay, but lighter and younger weaners often need additional supplements such as protein meal. Good quality hay will have a high proportion of leaf to stem, will be green and sweet smelling. Hays made from jarrah and cavalcade provide excellent nutrition for weaners. Hay containing legume leaf is usually more nutritious and digestible than hay made from grass alone. 
but changing to pure legume can cause scouring. Animal welfare is an important component of animal health, providing quality feed and clean water for your animals, access to shade and sufficient space for free movement and applying good handling techniques all influence animal welfare outcomes. Any surgical procedures should not be carried out if the wieners are wet or the yards are muddy and don't carry them out until the animals are ready to be turned out into the paddock. Disease management plays a major part in ensuring the health of your weaners. Prevention is best. Early detection of problems will ensure the best outcomes from any treatment. Signs of sick animals include watery or cloudy eyes, discharge around the muzzle or nose, general weakness and limb soreness. It's good practice to separate sick animals from the rest of the mob and avoid trucking sick animals. You might have heard of something called coccidiosis which is a form of post-weaning diarrhoea caused by a tiny protozoan parasite in the intestine. You can minimise the incidence of coccidiosis through reducing physiological stress, such as poor nutrition, and psychological stress, such as poor handling. There are many factors to consider when preparing for weaning. One of the most important is infrastructure and setting up your yards ready for weaning. When preparing, you need to ensure your yard facilities are in good order. Weaners need to be held in secure yards, particularly for the first few days of weaning. Check and repair fences before the weaners arrive. Ensure there is adequate shade, particularly if they are being held for extended periods of time. This is all just part of good stockmanship. Hay feeders and troughs should preferably be up off the ground to ensure good hygiene and reduce the risk of the spread of diseases such as coccidiosis. Ideally, feed troughs shouldn't be located too close to water troughs to reduce feed fouling the water supply and providing more feeding space. Whilst hay feeders are the gold standard, often you may not have access to them. In this case, it's a good idea to either leave the bales whole in the middle of the yard or, if you need to spread the bales out, it's best to put the hay as close as possible along the edge of the yard to minimise contamination. To avoid dust and poor vision in the yard for the safety of people and animals, it's recommended that somehow you wet down the soil. If you don't have sprinklers in the yard, get a firefighter or get a hose. Here are some useful yard tips make sure all gates are securely chained. Wire all gates overnight to prevent accidental opening by wieners playing with chains. Prevent dogs from wandering unaccompanied in the yards. Check the yards for any poisonous plants such as pigweed and button grass. Check the water source and quality prior to weaning. Use sprinklers to keep animals and people out of the dust. Safety in the yards applies to you, your co-workers and your livestock. Ensuring a functional yard setup, handling cattle in the right way and being aware of the effect of your actions throughout the yards will minimise danger to you and injury to your animals. A good general rule to remember is that weaners 100 to 200 kgs need about 3 to 4 square metres per head. Good handling techniques can help to avoid injury. The use of prodders should be avoided or minimised, particularly on young cattle in the training phase. It can make them fearful and therefore more dangerous. But do bear in mind, sometimes a quick, judicious use of the jigger on a problem animal can prevent having to stress all the animals around it. It is critical when doing this to apply the principle of pressure and relief. Never continue to jigger an animal that's moving in the desired direction. Some tips to keep safe in the yards. When shutting the gate, Put your foot on the bottom rail as quickly as possible. This minimises the risk of having the gate swing back and knocking you over or smashing you in the face. Always work at the end of the gate. If you stand behind the gate and the animal busts back and breaks the chain, you could be seriously injured. Never put your hands or other body parts in the race at a level where they could be crushed between the beast and the rail. 
Watch out for you and your mate. Make it a habit to look forward and back frequently. Learn to read cattle in order to better be able to predict their behaviour. Cover up in the sun. Wear covered shoes. Speak up if you feel unsafe about a situation. There is always an alternative. People that are susceptible to injury in the yards are those that lack good stockmanship and not fit for the job or not adequately trained. They're therefore out of position and out of control. Get the training, skills and knowledge to lead by example and stay safe when working with livestock in the yards.